Hello, welcome to the AEO Lite video tutorial series. AEO Lite is software that extracts digital audio from scans of motion picture films. It is based at the University of South Carolina and made possible by funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to set bounding boxes for variable area soundtracks. In general, variable area sound recordings encode electrical sound signals as a wave with pixels being either black or white. Unlike variable density, the proper placement of bounding boxes is essential to avoid clipping the peaks of variable area tracks. So let's look at what we have here. Off to my right, I have a 35 millimeter variable area negative. It's of the unilateral type and it's a very, very early sound recording. I've already set my frame rate here to 24 frames per second. I've set my frame pitch start up here. I've set my frame pitch end down here. I've looked to see that I've got pretty good overlap. Um, let me go ahead and set the bounding boxes in general. When I move this to the left, I want to be sure that I don't ever leave the left bounding box over the perf area, and I want to put it pretty snug up against the base of the track. If this were a um, bi bilateral track that had a uh, wave on two sides, we want to make sure that we're looking at the waves on both sides. But let's just go ahead and set this here. On my right, as we look, we're going to want to set this where I think it's going to be. So I'll just set that right about there. Um, and I'll just click forward to see what happens. You can see now the peaks of the track uh, popping up uh, as the noise increases. Um, and the key is, when we look at this, is to make sure that we're not clipping. And you can see right here, 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 the peak of this wave is now not contained inside of the optical sound bounding boxes and so we'll clip the sound track. To get a really good look at that I can go to show soundtrack only and now I'm just looking at the soundtrack and you can see here, 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 and here on the right where these peaks have been clipped. I can fine-tune my bounding boxes by using the up and down arrow on the right side. If I click forward you can see that I'm starting to move that bounding box in such a way that the peaks are now contained inside of the box. Let's uncheck that and look what I've done here. We now have adjusted that rather carefully. Let me keep going forward and I don't see it's pretty close there. Maybe I should go back here and see what we can see. It's close so I'll just we'll move another click forward. You can see I'm going to go to 420. What we don't want to do is slide so far that we get into the frame, and you can see this is this means it's a distorted image, but this is the actual frame. So I'm going to go back to 420, and I can do that by just typing 420 um, and snap right back to where I was. Uh, I'm going to uncheck show sound. I'm going to uncheck show soundtrack only, and um, let's go ahead and listen to a sample. I'll set in. In indiscriminately with the object solely of punishment. So what you can see there is it's a fairly a noisy track that's the camera noise from the original recording. While this is a unilateral track the principles of setting the bounding box parameters apply to all types of uh, variable area soundtracks although they have one or two channels.